What is happening, everybody? This is Austin Weiss coming at you with another interview in my Austin Weiss Home Advisors interview series. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Dottie Dose. She's the president and proud owner of Echo Home Inspections right here in the Chicagoland area. We're going to be covering everything you need to know about what Echo does for you during the home inspections, what to look out for in a home you're selling or purchasing, and much more. So without any further delay, let's hop into this interview. Okay, well, welcome back to Austin Wise Home Advisors interview series. My goal is to interview people who are crushing it in their industry and changing the way things are done while chasing fulfillment and having fun. So my interview today is with Dottie Dose. Am I saying that correctly? You are, yes. Okay, she is the president and owner of Echo Home Inspectors here in the Chicagoland area. So welcome to my channel, Dottie. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the invite. Yeah, I remember meeting you. I don't know if you remember me. Um, cause I was very soft spoken a few years ago, but I used to be with <laughs> the Keller Williams Chicago O'Hara office, okay. um, back in the day. And I was there for a few years and I always remember you coming into the office, um, just full of energy, always willing to help and lend a, lending a, a, a hand and just helping out as many agents as you possibly could. So I wanted to give back to you and make sure that I got you on my YouTube channel and, and just share with other people that are buying houses here in the Chicago land area all the great work that your company's doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's start off uh, first, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, the quick 30 second story of, you know, how you got to where you're at. Okay. Um, it, it's really crazy because I was a realtor. When people say the interest rates are, are going up and they're getting high, I just laugh because I was a realtor when it was 18%. Oh, wow. Okay. I left real estate at that point and I live in a Lindahl log home. And I went to building and general contracting the Linda Long homes. And people said, well, why did you do that? And I said, well, they were high-end homes. They didn't really care about the interest rate. So I did that for about 10 years. And then I would have had to move because I could not show my home as a model anymore. Right. And 31 years ago is when home inspection started. And that's exactly when I started. Okay. So that's Very a little good. bit of a background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And we'll get at the very end. I have a fire round of questions for you, and you can just okay. spit off answers off the top of your head. But um, let's let's get right into it. So you own your own inspection company. Tell the audience how an inspection works in in today's world. Okay. Well, basically, a lot of times we're contacted by, you know, we might be contacted by the realtor. We're contacted by the buyer. I have a lot of things that I do with the attorneys as well. So they'll call after, a, after um, an inspection, you know, a home is under contract. And generally there is just a five day, you know, attorney right. review. And uh, which is really short. I mean, a lot of states have 10 days and 15 days, sure. but a lot of states don't have attorneys either. You That's know, we're one, of the, we're one yep. of the very few that have attorneys. So um, that makes it a little bit, more challenging and I think in this market it needs to be the five days so basically are you wanting to know like what we do when we get there yeah absolutely tell us okay. kind of the quick thumbnail version of what your inspectors do when they come out to the house right we send out a team and we what we do is we send out an inspector and an associate now many times there's two inspectors if we do a 10,000 square foot home I'll send out four you know four people two oh, wow. teams we don't want to be there all day. You guys should be out there <laughs> selling or listing or doing whatever. You do not want to sit at a home inspection yeah. all day long. But basically, um, we're, we're starting outside. We're looking at the roof, the siding, the windows, the electric outside, water outside, the way of the land around the property to make sure that, that it doesn't sound like it's important, but it really, really is, that that water is diverted away from that foundation. Absolutely. And then we're looking at the garage, all the amenities, the garage, is there a fire door, is everything sealed up, you know, the electric, GFI outlets, things like that. Once we enter the home in every room, we will be operating all the windows and doors, all of the outlets. Um, we run all of the appliances through a full cycle. We're checking that attic area very, very closely. We want to make sure there's no mold up there. We, as an inspector, cannot call it mold. We have to right. call it a mold like substance sure. and uh, you know and then go from there years ago you'd call the mold guy and he'd go up there and say oh yeah it's mold and it's six thousand dollars and people should not be afraid of mold because it's not that expensive it can get rid of and it's really not that problem also want to make sure there's no little critters living up in that attic you know also right. 
Now we're checking water pressure and drainer, drainage anywhere. Um, and then, of course, all of your major mechanicals. Your okay. main electrical box, your furnace, your hot water heater, um, air conditioner, all of that. And then, you, you know, at the inspection, we're going to go over everything with that buyer, with that potential buyer. And most of the time, the realtor is there. And we just discuss everything. And we'd like to physically show them. But they will get a report. They will get a report with a, a lot of photographs. And if they have a question, once they get that report, our reports are emailed out to the buyer, the realtor, and the attorney. So nobody has to worry about anything. And the photographs are so the potential buyer can view the problem exactly. in, in a space that maybe they can't see from the naked eye. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And we use a camera. Most of the time we use a camera on a pole. With, and you would not believe you can see a dimple. You can see a dimple in that roofing. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, I belong to a coaching group for, well, since 2005, I think it was. And we've lost four inspectors in the group from all over the world, though. Actually, two, two from our area, two uh, died from falling off a roof. No and way. So see, I, that's why I use the pole. I invested, I invested okay. a lot, a lot of money. So we have safety money. for your inspectors so that accidents don't happen. Very good. Right. I've, seen, I've seen the pole several times. So I've always wondered why you utilize that versus having your inspector go on the roof. And that answered my question. So yeah. Now, if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a, you know, a roof that there's safety and they need to see something. But we can tell a lot about that roof through the attic area as well. Right. No, absolutely. Yeah, I've picked up on some tips from a couple of your inspectors when I'm going to show houses, when I poke my head in the garage or the, the attic and the, the um, under the shingles is exposed or that, that roof sheeting. Um, so I, I thank you for that, for your inspectors kind of educating me on what to look out for and what to point out to my clients. Tell me a little bit more about what inspections there are and what inspections that you guys typically perform, such as a termite mold, et cetera. Okay. In in house we do um, we do mold and we do do radon. Okay, sure. um, we have radon person in house, but then we also have a third party that I've used for 31 years as well as a backup. Right now, unfortunately, radon is really really backed up because of the the demand right now. I right. mean, and and they're having to get extensions for that. Most of the time, it's not a problem because that is a safety and habitability. But we do pre purchase. We do. Um, um, pre-purchase and then also we do something that the attorneys came to me when we had a lot of foreclosures and short sales yeah. and they said you know what we got to do something for these people that aren't going to do the inspection they don't want to spend the money because the house is as is okay yeah. and we're going to have a lot more foreclosures and short sales so we sat down with five different attorneys back in 2008 when it was really bad and we devised a five, we called it at that point, we called it a five point or a foreclosure inspection. It was the roof, the attic, the foundation, and the major mechanicals. That was it. Mm -hmm. We sent out one guy, but it was the main things. And if you think about it, that really was what an inspection was when it right. first started. It wasn't every little <laughs> thing, you know. Yep. So it kind of evolved. But now we do a lot of those same inspections for investors. Okay. We do a lot of those for investors. Good to know, because I've been getting quite a few investors from my YouTube channel and just and I hope you knew out. about this. I hope you knew about this inspection. Yeah, well now I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Usually well when I do presentations on that or when my um, marketing I have a full time marketing person, he will go and he'll tell them about that too. But okay. honestly a lot of people do it. Or let's say a guy is in construction or he knows houses or whatever. He just wants some major things done. Right. Absolutely. He doesn't want you to go through the house and, and point out every single little crack right. in the paint or whatever it right. is. And, and, and we everything. try, though, we really, really try, and I think you've probably experienced this, to put it in perspective. We're there for big ticket item, you safety, habitability, and non-functioning. Those right. are, I mean, we're going to tell you a lot more so that you're educated as a buyer, but that are that's not really what we're there for. Yeah, and I, and I, when I sit down with my buyers and I do my consultation before we ever go look at a house, I tell them the inspection is basically to determine whether or not you still want to buy the house or not. 
It's not for you to go through the house and find every single little thing that's wrong because you're buying a house most likely in most scenarios that someone's lived in for, for you know, 15, 20, 30 years. And there's going to be some things that are wrong with it. So it's not for you to, to nitpick and make the seller go fix a bunch of stuff. It's to determine whether or not you still want to pursue the purchase or not. And that's what I tell people. I heard you mention radon. And yes. for people that are coming from out of state, out of Illinois, or possibly even out of country that are watching this, um, tell us about radon, what it is, how you fix it. Okay, radon is a radioactive gas that um, they, they claim is the number, number one of lung cancer in non-smokers. Okay. Okay, and people that don't smoke. And people don't realize that it doesn't matter. Like, we had our, we had our home tested. I don't have it. My neighbors on both sides have it. Right. It just depends on the land, on the soil. It comes from the soil. And it depends on the soil that your house was built on. You know, some areas are higher than others, for right. sure. But it still doesn't mean that every house in that area has it. You know? right. um, and then we, we work with a mitigation system that I absolutely love. We contacted them when we were going and doing inspections and doing a radon and the radon was high and whatever, or we would see systems in homes that we inspected that it was such a really, really efficient and nicely put in system that we contacted them and we work with them all the time now. And it's not that expensive, um, you know, and generally if the radon comes up high, it's the seller's responsibility right. to take care of that. Right. Yeah, because it's a it's a safety issue, especially if you have little kids or if you have a finished basement house. Because um, that's typically where I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but that's typically where radon's found. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Now, well, now well, what what I've heard a lot of realtors say, and it's really really not true. If you don't have a basement, you don't need a radon test. That is so untrue. Because if you really really think about it, now it's coming directly into the home. Right. You know, so there's no rhyme or reason to that. Yeah, I've know? sold several homes and listed several homes where they were on a slab or a crawl space and they did not have a basement. And they, the radon test came back and it was over that level, uh, that safety level that's recommended. So it's a misconception. I'm not saying that any, anybody's wrong. They just don't know. Right. You know, a lot yeah. of people are not educated on the, on the radon. And um, if you've been in the industry and, we, you know, we've gone through periods where it's radon, 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 and then it's bold, bold, bold. Sure. You know, it's just it's just a cycle. So tell the audience how you fix it. And it's from my understanding, it's, it's fairly simple because I've done it a few dozen times. And I'm sure you've done it a few hundred times, if not thousands of times. Well, we don't fix the radon, but, sure. but I know how it's done. And it's basically, yeah. in fact, the builders now have to put in a passive system, which right. I'm sure you know about that. Um, and all it is is PVC piping that goes into the ground. It's so much less expensive to do it while they're building it because they're putting it before the concrete is poured. Yeah. And so this pipe, and it's just a fan that circulates the air and it goes up through the pipe and out through the siding or the roof, however they decided to put it. So, so what you're saying is it's a simple fix. Radon's nothing to be scared of. No, in fact, and I, I don't want to say it the wrong way, but if you have it and it's taken care of, it's almost better because it could change six months from now. Sure. You cannot have it and you think you're safe. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're going to sell your house. And well, I had it tested when I bought it and it was fine. Yeah. Well, now, how long have you lived with it? We don't know. Sure. But if it's been mitigated, you know, and if they have a passive system in, all you have to do is put the motor on. That's all that's missing. Okay. So it's not that expensive. Gotcha. All right. Well, t going off of radon, because that's one of the most common issues. Tell us the other three or four common issues that your inspectors actually find in homes. A lot of grading, believe it or not, and like I said, it, people don't think it's important, but a lot of grading issues, a lot of roof issues, those are big issues as well, you know, where, and sometimes it's a newer roof, but it wasn't installed properly. Gotcha. You know? Um, or we go out there and there's two or three layers, which three layers are not even allowed anymore. Um, when I first started doing inspections, there was an older realtor here in Elgin and I called him up and I said something about, can you just 
can you have three layers? And he goes, Elgin, you still can. Really? He, says, why did, he said, why did you call me? And I said, because you're the oldest realtor I know. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he just laughed, you know. But he did. He was older. He knew everything about Elgin. And so I went to him about a lot of things, you know. I and actually saw a three-layer roof this summer. And really? I think it might have been your inspector who pointed it out. And they were just kind of <laughs> shaking their head. And I was like, I've never seen one. I've seen two two layers, um, and I know the insurance the homeowners insurance companies frown on that. Um, and and you know, it's just, it's just more expensive when you go to repair replace that and repair it someday, taking the two layers off. Well, so. the thing is, I don't even at, when I was building in general contracting, I don't even recommend two layers because that second layer is taking the thing of the first layer you're going to get less life out of that second layer right. there's no doubt about it yeah you know? any any other common um finds that your inspectors come across? Um, a lot of electrical a lot of electrical yep. <laughs> a, lot of, I, a lot of efci electrical. outlets and then the electrical box i come across quite a, quite a bit exactly a lot of little electrical boxes um you know and, and i don't know if i'm sure you know it but you can't even get an insurance company if it's only 60 amps right very, very few insurance companies will, will cover a 60 amp service. Just off the top of my head, another one that I come across quite frequently because I'm out in the suburbs mostly and I, and I do do the city once in a while, but those are typically condo towers. Um, so I don't find this problem as much, but in the suburbs, the homes were built more in that 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. So before they updated the building codes, the bathroom fans were not vented through the roof. Uh, so they, the vent, they vent through the attic and there's always a patch of mold or usually a patch of mold right above where that vents into the attic. Is that something right. that you're, that you're inspecting? Right. And that's, and that, unfortunately that's a, such a simple fix. Oh yeah. The, to, to vent, to vent it into the roof, but people don't know right. who goes in their attic. Most nobody. people don't even know, nobody even knows that it went there. Right. And that's what we try to say. You know, we find things in the attic and then they're like, Oh, well the seller knew about it. No, the seller, probably never was in his attic, you know. Yeah. There's so many things that people just don't know. They don't, you live there for so long. And just like when people go back and they want these people to fix all these things, you gotta be realistic. If they were gonna fix it, they'd fix it for themselves and they probably wouldn't be selling. Sure, <laughs> you know? that's, that's a great point. I'm gonna use that in the future. <laughs> yeah. So going off what I just said, because I do work, I, I do work the suburbs and the city, um, what's, in your opinion, the major differences between what you do find in inspections between a city home or a condo versus what you would find in the suburbs? Well, a lot of them are rehabbed. A lot yeah. of homes are rehabbed. And sometimes they're in this. And, and I shouldn't say that that's either both city and suburbs, but they're made to look pretty, but they're covering up a lot of things. Yeah. You know, we've done, I can't tell you how many where they've just gone over the attic access. You know, and wow. the attic, well, the attic access, I'm sorry, is a really, really important. You got to go. Oh, absolutely. So it's basically the attorneys are going to say, you need to get it open and we have to go back right. and inspect it. Um, the biggest thing as far as city in the suburbs, and you're not old enough to know this, but way back in the day, you had to have 50% down to buy a home in the city. Wow. And that's why the suburbs flourished, because you didn't have to have that much down. You know, See, so the, that things, was, the things I learn from people that have been in the industry for way longer than me, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But I love when you said that you've learned some things from my inspectors, because that gives you a heads up right when you're showing right. the property. Yep. You know, my biggest, um, my biggest complaint is we do an inspection and there's all these fogged windows and now it's become a home inspection issue. When that was visible, sure. that was visible when they made the contract. Yep. So I, have, I have someone right now who's having the seller fix or giving them a credit, a repair credit for three fogged windows in the home. So. Yeah. I mean, some of them, I, I, I agree. Sometimes you don't see them. Right. But a lot of them are really bad. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. So going off of what you just said, um, you know, any tips for the audience when they're actually going to look at homes with their realtor or with me as a realtor? Just to ask a lot of questions, be educated, um, and know exactly what you're looking for. I love a realtor that really listens to their client 
and knows what they want. Right. And sometimes they don't know what they want, unfortunately. That's true. <laughs> you know, so sometimes you show them something totally off the beaten path and they're like, wow, you know, yeah, this is it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be one of the things that I would that I would really say. Um, just really, really look at what your needs are. You know, our biggest question to my guys is if this was your daughter, would you let her buy this house? Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. I love and, it. And our answer is we can't answer that because we don't know any house and anything can be fixed. We don't know how much money you have. We don't know. Do you have tradesmen in the, in the family? Sure. You know, do you have friends that are a plumber, an electrician, whatever, which changes the whole dynamics of everything. So we never can answer that. Okay. My guys would be in big trouble if they did answer. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. So I know you mentioned this earlier, um, but you know, during the inspection, what will your inspectors be doing? And then after the inspection happens, um, what can the home buyer expect um, from your inspectors or from your company? Okay. Basically, they're going to get emailed, you know, and at the end of the inspection, and know that because, and that's one reason why I send out two people. It's a very, very thorough inspection, and basically. A lot, let's say there's a couple, okay? The main inspector is gonna go with the guy that's doing the roof and the electric and the whatever. The assistant or associate, whatever you wanna call them, that is with them all the time is doing the windows and the electric with the lid tester and things like that. And they're always together and they're always conversing and going back and forth. At the end of the inspection, most of the time, they've already showed those people yeah. What, what's in that report, you know, but at the end, they're going to go through and tell them what is, what is more major. Sure. And, you know, and they, they better be pointing out at least three good things about the house or otherwise. I'm yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way I train them. You know, I don't care how bad the house is. You don't know where these people are coming from. This could be the Taj Mahal to them. Sure. And you treat them with the same respect as you're treating someone with a million dollar home. Yeah. Going, going off that, because people always ask me, for, and realtors need to be very careful of what they say to people because we can get in trouble. For right. instance, if someone asks me, is this a good area? Well, what's good to you? Because good can mean a lot of different things to many, many people. So I'm very careful of how I answer that question. And I always provide information on the internet to people so they can, they can research the area on their own and I'm not steering them in a certain direction. Um, but that brings us kind of to the fire round, I want to call it. I'm going to ask you a little bit more specifically about Echo, how you guys got started. And then if you guys, if you can just answer these questions, uh, first thing that comes to mind, um, the audience would just love to hear it. So, you know, what's Echo's philosophy and, and what actually makes you different from other inspection companies? Our philosophy is if you love what you do, everybody wins. There you go. I love it. That's awesome. Um, and I and I have people tell me that all the time. They could tell yeah. that I love what I do. I love what I do. I can definitely. And I don't want I don't want anyone on my teams. And we're just a family run business. I mean, one of my guys, his mom just passed away. And everybody, you know, covered for everybody and you know, you just get through it. Yeah. We were going to, we've always have a big picnic at one of my guys has a summer home at Fox Lake. We didn't do it this year though, because right. of the pandemic. We wanted to, but we're yeah. like, we could be shut down and sure. we're doing, right now we're doing between 85 and 95 inspections a week. A week? A week. That's incredible, daddy. That is what we're doing a week. That's incredible. So, so tell us how long you've actually been in business. 31 years. Wow. So you're not new to this. No. Nope. You guys actually know what you're doing. Yep. 1989. There you go. Hey, I, I know a guy who was born in 1989. <laughs> um, what areas of Chicagoland do you cover? And is there any areas that you don't cover? Really not. Um, we, we do a lot. Believe it or not, we do a lot of Chicago. We go all the way to Gurney. We go all the way on the south side. We go to Rockford. We go to Oswego. And we do everything in between. Okay. But that's also because I have guys that live in different areas. Right. So then it's easy. I've got two guys that live in Chicago. And because they're in Chicago, right by O'Hare Airport, they can get on the expressway and go. 
they can go to Gurney in no time and they can go all the way south, you know, as well. Great. And then a lot of my guys are right out here in the suburbs. Okay. That's so fantastic. We cover, we cover just about everything. And I'll tell you what, if if you use this all the time, our our thing is usually about an hour. We'll travel yeah. about an hour. Oh, we'll get we've to that. We're, we've we'll get traveled. To that. <laughs> we've yep. traveled two hours for somebody that uses us all the time and we just bite the bullet and do it. Oh, I, I, I know I've had your guys go all over because I've had you get, you do inspections for me closer to the city and then way out in the western suburbs and the northwest suburbs as well. So I really appreciate it for that. Um, for the reason being, why do you use two home inspectors? Well, like I said, it's, it's a lot of times it, it's an inspector and associate. And then sometimes it's two, you never know. And sometimes it's two inspectors. If we're sending out two teams, a lot of times it's two and two. Right. And the reason I do is I feel that it's a much more thorough inspection. And we don't do a sporadic check. I don't know if you've been I'm sure you've seen other inspectors and I'm not, everybody has a different theory on it and sure. they differ what they want to do. Some do a window here and there. Some do an outlet here or there. Some don't run the appliance. I had a realtor that called me up and was just livid because I have a guy that will do the inspection in an hour and your guys take too long. You're sending two guys and they're there two hours. That's way too long. I don't, if my guys are there less than an hour and a half, I'm like, what's going on? Sure. What's going on? Because most yeah. homes, I mean, sometimes, okay, you're looking at a thousand square foot home or whatever. It's different. But if we're doing a condo, I only send one guy. And if the square footage or on a five point, like I told you about the five point and the investor one, there's only one guy. Right. Because you're only doing the, the major things. You're not doing every window, every outlet. You're not running every appliance. That's where I think we're different because we are very, very thorough, I believe. Well, the reason I asked you is I wanted to make this point because I've had other inspection companies and I'm not saying that they're not professional or they right. don't do a great job, but I don't want to be at the property for four hours when I have other things to go do. And the fact that you send out two home inspectors or for a larger home, you send out three or four, you get that family, you get that realtor and you get everybody out of that property quicker and you get more than one set of eyeballs on the problems and on the house and you can get multiple opinions and it's just a better more thorough inspection in my opinion right yeah so, and like i said we it isn't always just two inspectors but it's right. always a team and it's and they always are identified they always have a you know a, a lanyard that says you know i'm the main inspector i'm the yeah. associate whatever it is um and that's how we've done it for 31 years yeah, no, I love it. It's, it's fantastic. I really appreciate you for that. And believe All it or right. not, that that happened by accident. Oh, really? That happened that's, by that's accident. That's the backstory. It happened by accident. Okay. It happened by accident. Um, so I was getting out of selling the homes. A neighbor of mine came, came to me and said, I love the way you do business. I want to start a business with you. How about appraisals or home inspections? And I said, well, I won't do appraisals because I've always been on my own and you had to be under someone for two years. So he said, all right, let's try home inspectors. He was, a, he was only with me for three months and then they had property somewhere else and they ended up moving. Okay, oh, they moved man. from across the street from me. But anyways, when he first started to do the inspection, I'm like, well, I can go. So while he was doing that, I was doing the windows and the outlets and whatever. Sure. I did inspections up until about 15 years ago. No way. Yeah, I was out there okay. all the time. Yeah. Very cool. Well, what were you, so you talked about what you did before Echo. Um, and let's get into this because I'm all about people that are, you know, go getters and just really changing their industry for, for, the, mo for the most part. Um, and you made a point about this in, when you came out to Keller Williams' office and, and in your email to set up this interview that you're a woman owned and operated business. And in the inspection industry, you don't really see that see that very much um can you expand on a little bit about that for all the women who are watching this who might want to get into some real estate function whether it's home inspections or something else yeah um i, I belong like i said i belong to a coaching group i think it's since 2005 and i honestly don't believe i would be here if i wasn't in coaching that's why i love the bold and i love yeah. education and i love coaching i just because I know that I probably would have crashed in 2008, like a lot of the other home inspectors sure. did, but I survived. Um, and so that 
was really, really important to me. You mean you work on yourself, your mindset, so you can improve your business and help more people? Exactly. I love the it. More, one of our philosophies is the more successful you are, the more people you can help. There you go. Awesome. And even as far as as many people as I have working for me, they all have jobs, you know, and just all, all the way along the way. I can help by sponsoring things. You know, I sponsor people for certain sure. coaching and as well. Um, and I love it. I just yeah. love it. But it is, it's hard. A woman, I still haven't, and I and I'm, don't mean to be discriminatory, but I don't know. It's really, really harder for a woman to prove herself. I can imagine. I can only imagine. Yeah. And now because of the fact that I was a realtor and I was a builder, general contractor, and now the home inspection I have attorneys calling me all the time from somebody else's report hmm. because they, they can't get a hold of them. That's the other thing. We answer, and you probably know this, we answer our phone 24-7. You do. You, you call me back at 8 o'clock at night sometimes or, or yeah. you know, 7 o'clock. If, I'm not, if I'm not doing it, I mean, I've backed off a little bit. I have someone that has the phone over the weekend. You're right. You're right. Okay. Well, hey, how can people get a hold of you? You know, what's the best way to reach out to you? I know you just mentioned the phone, but um you know just tell the audience yeah um the, the phone number the uh, area 847-888-3931 and if you need me you can also call me on my cell which is 847-417-7102 if i can't help you i will call my office girl that's got the phone and we'll get you scheduled that's not a problem awesome and then you can um email me dotty at echo home inspections with a s.com and our website, echohomeinspections.com. Okay. For everyone watching, I will put Dottie's contact information and website information in the description down below. But hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your Friday to do this interview with me. I think this is going to be really educational for people who are looking to buy a home in the Chicagoland area. And if you ever have any questions for Dottie or myself, you're welcome to reach out to us days, nights, weekends. And we would just love for the opportunity to help you in any way possible. But like I said, Daddy, thanks so much for sharing your love for the industry and <laughs> thank you. You know everything that you're doing to change the space, not only for the inspection industry, but for women as business owners. And I just really appreciate you for your time. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you having me on here. Absolutely. Really Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. We'll catch you guys later, right? All right. Bye. Thank you.